In this video, we're going to talk about how if you want something that you've never had before, you're going to have to do something that you've never done before. That's right. We're going to talk about it. Breaking news, folks. Breaking news. Small Business Superhero Podcast has Jeff Landon. <laughs> so you and I were talking this morning, and yeah. we got into a conversation about the fact that one of the things that set us apart uh, in 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 our work is the fact that we had no qualms about being the first one in and we had no qualms about staying and being the last ones out. Work ethic sets people apart. Right. Whether you're working a nine to five, whether you're a 1099 contractor, or whether you're working your side hustle, it's work ethic that's gonna set people apart. So what is that saying we always said about being on time? If you're on time, you're, you're late. late. <laughs> yeah. If you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're actually late, stand by because game over. We have lived by that mantra since uh, 10 plus years now. Well, yeah, it, it, before that, in the military, I lived by it. It served us well. Absolutely. I, I always want to be early. And that is, a, that is an attitude in which makes change, gives you something you never had before with that kind of attitude, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. Well, it's. The, when you garner a reputation of always being early, mm -hmm. I remember I was 17 years old and I worked at a pizza joint. And one day I was on time and the manager was out front with his cell phone out making phone calls because he was worried about me. And you were on time Because still. I was on time and I showed up and I was like, his name was Reggie. Is it Reggie, is everything okay? He's like, man, I thought you got in a wreck for sure, man. You're always early, always early. What you doing on time? <laughs> old school ways of doing business. You're the first one in. You get, you, people recognize this. Now, it may, it may be or may not be at your current position. With us, first one in, last one to leave, right? Yeah. It, it, made, it didn't make a difference where we, were current, where we used to work at, but it made us, it stood us out for the crowd when it came to this job now, because what we're doing. You, you can't buy a reputation. Exactly. You can't buy a reputation, it's earned. And you know, the, the old saying is that, is that one, Oh man, ruins all your attaboys. And yeah. so so you have to your reputation is earned minute after minute, day after day, and you're only as good as the last performance. Mm -hmm. The why is that important to people who are watching our channel? It's because that work ethic, and, and these days it's almost like a like a dirty word to say work ethic. You have to have work ethic. You have to yeah. work diligently. That's important because whether you're working that nine to five and you want to advance in that nine to five, or whether you are a, a small business owner, you have a brick and mortar shop, you've got to be in there first, you've got to stay yeah. and, and leave last until you get to a point that the store is minding itself. You remember what, uh, what El Jefe, the CEO said, yep. he said you've got your finders, grinders, and minders. minders. When you're in your finders phase where you're looking for that business, or whether you're in your grinders phase where you're you're in the deep in the throes of that grind that battle to to fight to keep that that business going both of those phases require that you have more work ethic than the person next to you it requires yeah. that you work harder than you've ever worked before well another point i think of is your first one in the last one leave you have a great work ethic you're working hard at a current job right mm -hmm. well that current job may not be where you end up for the rest of your career mm -hmm. But when you go for that other job, when you move up the ladder some, that is going to reflect where you're going to try to do in the past. So if you're a mop, if you're a guy that mops a gym floor every day at the YMCA or something, you're first one in, you take care of everything, you take care of that the best you can. You're first one in, last one leave every day, right? True. You're not going to move up from being a mop floor uh, sweeper or mopper or a maintenance guy from the YMCA. But when you move up to um, let's say a uh, director of a youth camp or something, you know, cause you got, you know. It'll then be noticed it'll, and yes. acknowledged that, you, that you're dependable, that they can count on you. Hey, has, uh, has Edward, how was his work ethic where he, uh, his last job? Oh, he was great. Mm -hmm. He's the first one in, last one leave. He worked hard. Oh, thank you so much. I think we're gonna hire this guy. It, exactly. it counts, it matters. Now, what about the people who have no interest in continuing on with that, that traditional nine to five job? You're talking about yeah. your, your side hustle folks. You're talking about your, your part-time entrepreneurs. You're talking about the ones who want to take their part-time gig and turn it into a full-time. They want yeah. to go Advocation pro. to vocation. Yeah, exactly. Turn your hobby into a job. You want to go pro in what they, they right now are doing on the side. Right. Well, that still, when you are dedicating yourself to that hobby, to that side hustle, 
you're doing it before your traditional job or after your traditional job. We're kind of saying that you want to do both. Yeah. Bookend your traditional job with the effort that you're putting in on that side hustle that you're trying to turn into the number one thing. Yeah. I mean, you're doing it. You're doing your hobby anyway. So just put a little extra into it. Not too much. You know, people got kids and family, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'll be devil's advocate on this one. I have a nine to five job. Oh, I don't have time to make these tumbler cups for people. These epoxy tumbler cups or uh, handmade soaps. Mm -hmm. Right? I love I handmade don't, soaps. Yeah. I'm not going to pretend I don't. Yeah, yeah. So I come home every day, my nine to five, right? And then I want to change my hobby into, I want to work on my hobby being my main job or yep. even a side hustle, as they say. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm tired. Well, you don't have to do like eight hours on top of eight hours. Just, just use your time wisely and think about what can I get the most bang for my buck. Maybe on a Monday, I get my scents together. Yep. Tomorrow is when I mix the however you make hand soap, the soap together. <laughs> but it's it 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 is out there. Just be smarter. Verifiable information is out there that when a person, if a person's working in an eight-hour job and then the time they spend on their side hustle, if they spend eight hours on their side hustle it is not the same as working 16 hours. It is the same as working 24 hours or 36 hours because something happens. It, it's a paradigm shift in your mind. Something yeah. happens to you as a person when you dedicate yourself to your quote side hustle equally as you do to your traditional job that you're trying to either escape or supplement or however you view it. Real life experience. This is what me and you are doing right now. We worked a nine to five right and sometimes extra because the job needed it it was it was, a, it was a calling you have to do this yep we worked that out with this job here we can work nine to five we can get 80 hours flat and then just keep doing it but this is a passion for me and you yeah i would do this for free i work on weekends i work at this when i get home from the office mm -hmm. i'm at home on my computer going oh, okay what about this let me, let me go ahead and edit this we put this on let me go ahead and put this on the podcast um, I do the same thing. I'll Saturday and Sunday, yeah. I do it. Yeah. And so we are putting in 50, 55 hours, maybe more, 60 hours on a, a week. It doesn't uh, feel like work, though, because you love it. Yeah. It's crazy. We're doing like, it, because we want to hustle. We will put more hours in so we can move down the line further, and faster. And you, you get the results, and, and you get the value out of what you put into it. Yeah. If you, get, if you put in bare minimum, you're going to get bare minimum, bottom of the barrel, scrape in the bottom results. If you put in a average or slightly above average value mm -hmm. in, you're going to get slightly above average back. We come in the morning, we make a plan, we go execute it, and then we're already thinking about Friday. It's, it's Monday today, mm -hmm. and we're already thinking about what we can do Friday. Yep. And then this weekend's going to come up, and I'm like, you know what? I'll probably be at home working on my computer Saturday, Sunday. If I'm we're not in the office work. <laughs> if, if I'm going to work until I get the results I want. And then maintaining. Minders phase. Minders phase. Minders, grinders, and minders phase. But at the point of the minders phase, it's not a matter of, oh, well, I get to, to sail smooth and, and rest on my laurels. At that point, you have built something that has so many moving parts that now you have other people involved in it. Yeah. So you have other uh, people who are working their way up the mountain. You have other finders and grinders finding and grinding for you while you mind it. And the minding is just as stressful and interesting and rewarding. It's just a different, different type. Different thing now. Yeah. You know, that's, that's how I feel people need to kind of make that paradigm shift inside themselves. Because what is it that you need to do that you've never done before? A lot of times it just boils down to shifting that paradigm mentally mm -hmm. so that you say, oh, wait a minute, this isn't a nine to five world, it's a 24 seven world. And if I can work to put things into place that generate that revenue for me 24 seven, then I get out of that nine to five world mindset. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, because if, if you are a Ford maintenance guy at the YMCA gym, mm -hmm. you're gonna do something else after that. And so you put that work ethic into that. And the next thing you know, you're like, you know, I can start my own business where I can do all the gyms mm -hmm. in my local area. Yep. Well, you put, you put your hours into that, and now you put your hours into this. Bob Proctor did that. Oh, okay. Bob, that's exactly what Bob Proctor did. He started out cleaning floors. He would clean office floors. And so, okay, I need more money, so I need to find another office to clean. And so he was cleaning one office, then two offices, then five offices, then six offices, then 10 offices. And then one day he realized he was exhausted 
and he could not handle all the offices. He tells a story about how he was walking one day and just passed out on the street because he was overly exhausted. Mm. And so something in his mind, his paradigm shift, and he said, okay, if you can't personally clean all of them, then personally clean none of them. And so he brought people on to clean the offices. So every office that he got to clean, he never physically cleaned them. He had somebody clean that office and then had somebody clean that office and that one. That allowed him to have that paradigm shift. So he ended up cleaning offices in London and in Taiwan and in everywhere all over the world. He built a company that cleaned offices and it had nothing to do with him holding the bucket and the mop. Yeah. But you think he 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 led up on that? I'm the first one in, last I, one out. I still no, have my didn't. yeah, yeah. He, I still have my six offices. I'm gonna stick with that. First one in, last one out. No, he said oh, Taiwan's got offices. Taiwan's got offices. You know? Yeah, exactly. And so he was he was up before everyone else and working after everyone else because the world is a 24/7 place and he was finding new offices for him to clean. But he was hiring people to clean them. But he was out there finding and grinding. That is, that's another part of a paradigm shift that people often miss. They often think that most people always think to themselves, "Oh, I'm working for so and so. I work for Bob Incorporated. Bob is my boss. I work for Bob." The paradigm shift that you can make is you work for you Incorporated. And when you work for you Incorporated, you're going to work a lot harder for you than you would work for somebody else. Yeah. So if you have that, 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 that mental attitude that you work for you Incorporated, when you show up to stock the shelves, you're working for you Incorporated. i got to make the personal ownership of these shelves, yep. make them look perfect, because these shelves are a reflection of me, of me Incorporated. Again, if you frame the paradigm at your business that each individual working for you is working for them Incorporated, and they are rewarded as if they work for them incorporated, then you're gonna get a level of work out of, out of people that you would not get otherwise, and you might be extremely shocked at just how well people are willing to work for you when, they, when it's framed as they're working for them incorporated. What we're talking about here is come in early, stay late. If you're on time, you're late. Uh, what else are there little mantras that we've learned over the years? If you want something that you've never had before, you will have to do something that you've never done before. And that can be just as simple as a, a paradigm shift in your mind. I'm working for me incorporated yeah. and go to work with the attitude of you're working for you incorporated so that when you get there, you work harder than the person next to you because you're working for you. That's right. And that will carry on throughout your life. I work my tail off for this guy. When I move up the ladder a little bit, oh, he's going to talk to that guy. I work, he worked his tail off for me. He's a good guy. He's a good person. And you just keep that up, and you're going to keep climbing and be successful. We are at the point now where our hard work has paid off to the fact that we're in a park on a Monday morning, and this is our job now. It has paid off all the hard work we put in. I'm Ash the Mad Scientist. I'm Dave the Barbarian. Small Business Superheroes Podcast, powered by AMSDynamics.com. Like and subscribe our channel. This is channels for entrepreneurs and small business like-minded people, and we're here to help. Email us at info at amsdynamics.com. Uh, drop us a line. Also, what else? Well, let me yeah, something. Feel, Facebook. Feel free to leave a comment. We read every comment. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We read and respond to every comment. Absolutely. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Extra, extra, the Small Business Superheroes podcast on all of your favorite podcast platforms like Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon, Anchor, iHeartRadio, and many more. Small Business Superheroes is powered by AMSDynamics.com.